have become the controlling stakeholders in democracy. And this is political stability. And not only stable, they become more mature. In the past, there have been numerous ideological polarizations which had caused death and destruction, civil wars. <coughs> People were killing each other for in the name of ideologies. Ideologies, imported ideologies. Marxism, Maoism, capitalism, neoliberalism. And now Latin America is moving away from this destructive divide to a constructive consensus. A consensus, not important one, a consensus indigenous one. Made in Brasilia by Lola, it's called as Brasilia consensus. And what is this consensus about? This is a pragmatic and balanced mix of pro-poor and pro-business policies. And this is maturity. In the economic side, Latin America had these twin curses of hyperinflation and addiction to external change. In the olden days of hyperinflation, there was a joke that one can never say exactly the Latin American inflation or the Indian population. <laughs> By the time you finish the sentence, the numbers will have gone up. <laughs> but now, in the last decade, the Latin American inflation has been in a single digit. And last year, it was 5.8%. And the Latin American policy makers have been de-addicted <coughs> from the reliance on excessive external debt. Today, the ratio of external debt to GDP in Latin America is 28%. In many European countries, it's over 80%. And in the United States, it's 100%. The Latin American policy makers have become more disciplined and more prudent than their counterparts in India, Europe, and the fiscal deficit is 0.3% of the GDP. In India, it's 5%. Many European countries, 7%. And the United States, 8%. Apart from making the uh, macroeconomic fundamentals strong and healthy, and the economy is resilient, the Latin American governments have succeeded in bringing down poverty and inequality. In the last decade alone, about 50 million people have come out of the poverty. Uh, in the, uh, uh, apart from this, you have the growth. In Latin America has been growing. After the financial crisis of 2008-9, Latin America bounced back with a 6% growth in 2010. In 2011, it was 4%. Last year, it went down to a modest 3.1%. And this year, it is projected to be 3.8%. But I believe Latin America is set on a course of sustainable growth in the years to come. That is why there is buzz in Latin America that this is the decade of growth. Some people even call it as the Latin American decade. Culturally, there has been a revolution, a cultural revolution of a different type. In those days of political instability and economic uncertainties, people got bogged down with short-term survival and quick profits. In those days of 3,000 percent inflation, a Latin American would go to the bar and order three beers. Because by the time he finished one beer or ordered the next one, the price would have gone up. <laughs> but now, with this stability and predictability, there is the focus on the long term. Long term on education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. 
I'll just give you two examples of entrepreneurship, not Petrobras or Embraer, small people. There's a girl from Brazil called Cecilia. She went to London. She worked in a shop owned by an Indian called Malhotra. And innovative Cecilia became Cecilia Malhotra. She took him back to Sao Paulo. And she wanted to do some business with India. Her husband advised him, why don't you import henna, which is a typical Indian product, which is used for hair color. So she started importing this henna powder from India. The business was doing well. Now sometime she stopped the import of finished products and she started importing the ingredients, the raw materials. So she made her own brand called Surya Henna. Did well in Brazil, neighboring countries, all of Latin America, United States. She built up a business of $20 million. And then she did the imprint she started exporting to India. <laughs> she is exporting over a million dollars of Surya and not to India. And now she has a plan to set up a plant in India <coughs> to make the Surya and our products to export to other countries in the future. That is the new entrepreneurship. There is a company from Peru called AHA. AJ. Now, this company has established a bottling plant in Maharashtra, in India, to produce cola drinks, a brand called Big Cola. Isn't it amazing? The Indian companies, the Indian cola uh, drink manufacturers, were either sold out or they had surrendered to Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola. And here comes a Peruvian company, a small company, which wants to do, which the Indian companies couldn't do. And that is what I call the new Latin American entrepreneurship. Latin America has two distinctive advantages over most of the emerging markets which we are talking about in the constellation of growth, and specifically India and China. They have energy and food security. So, Latin America is a net exporter of oil. They are going to increase the production and export more in the coming years, thanks to the discovery of free salt uh, reserves in Brazil, which is going to increase the production from 2 million to 5 million barrels per day by 2020. Now, Mexico and Venezuela are going to open up, invest more, and ramp up the production. Not only conventional oil, Argentina has the third largest shale gas reserves in the world, untouched, only now they are stopped. And there is also shale gas in Mexico and in Brazil. Apart from these conventional energy sources, Latin America is also a leader in biofuels. Like Brazil is the global leader and pioneer in use of fuel ethanol. Almost every car made in uses, uh, uh, it is called flexi fuels. They have these flexi engines in their cars, which use 100% alcohol or 100% petrol or any combination of that. And Argentina is the world's leading exporter of biodiesel. In the case of food, South America is an agricultural powerhouse, especially in the food. Uh, they have the potential and the capacity to increase the production and feed many more millions in India, China, and the rest of the emerging world. They have a lot of fertile land and they can bring in easily another 100 million hectares for agricultural production without touching the Amazon. They have abundance of water and they have technology, <coughs> innovation, and best practice. Now, talking about best practices, I must tell you that like in India, we excel in BPOs and KPOs. In Argentina, they have come out with something what I call as the APOs, Agriculture Process Outsourcing. A friend of mine, Argentine friend called Robo Kupate, he cultivates 270,000 hectares of land in 
Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and in the Santa Cruz province of Bolivia. <coughs> he doesn't own a single export. Everything is released. He doesn't own a single tractor or harvest. Everything is outsourced. All the operations of planting and spraying, everything is outsourced. The agronomists who handle each about 5,000 hectares, they all get their commission on the production. So he has made a virtual cycle of connecting all these points, adding value to everyone, and getting profit for himself. This is the new agriculture process outsourcing. Another Argentine company has scaled it up and taken to a new level, a company called El Tejar. El Tejar cultivates 900,000 hectares of land. There's no company in Europe or United States or China, anywhere in the world, which cultivates 900,000 hectares of land. Of course, these are all, I have highlighted the positive aspects of this new Latin American country. They have their own share of challenges, challenges of poverty, inequality, poor governance, infrastructure, urban crime, many. And there is a risk. There is a serious and personal risk when you do business with the Latin America. And the risk of doing business with the Latin America is falling in love. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to many of my friends. They ended up with the Latin American spouses, boyfriends, and girlfriends. And I myself am a victim of the charm and addiction of Latin America. <laughs> But I tell my Indian friends that even if you don't want to take the risk, at least you make a travel, visit Latin America. You come back happier and younger. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, look, I, what I'd like to do is, is make two points. Um, one judge is uh, very optimistic and uh, I think extraordinarily thorough uh, catalog of, of where Latin America is going. A couple points. One uh, positive, but then another one that builds on something that Ingo said that uh, perhaps reflects a different, uh, more cautious uh, point of view. And I want to elaborate on that. The first simply is, is and I'll be very quick, 